Hello, and welcome to the Good Food Program. Your host is Cindy Sasenya, the Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program Assistant for Lake County, Ronan, Montana. These programs are designed to help families with children use USDA and other inexpensive foods to prepare tasty, nutritious, attractive meals that are low in cost. The recipes will be put on the screen later, so keep a pencil and paper handy. Videotapes of these programs are available at the FNEP office in Lake County and other extension service offices in Montana and the Salish Kootenai College Library in Pablo. Welcome to the Good Food Program. This is the last program in our series, and today we're going to do a barbecue. And our guest is Frank Tyro. He's the manager, director, producer of SKT, SKC TV, and he's send been, money. Hmm? Send, send money. money. And <laughs> he's been responsible for helping us put all these shows together and making them work. And today we're going to make him cook. What are you going to cook? Well, we've got two things. Actually, neither one of them are cooking. One is uh, a cold soup, and. Um, it's a Mexican soup called gazpacho, and uh, I know cold soup count, sounds a little strange, but mm -hmm. it's, it's actually very good, I think, uh, especially on a nice hot summer day. Mm -hmm. The other thing I haven't figured out a name for, and I can't really take the credit for it, some friends of mine uh, introduced me to it, and it's a fruit salad that's uh, made from uh, a lot of the fruits that you find, you know, especially during the summertime. And again, uh, if you chill that in the refrigerator, then it makes a real nice um, summer refreshing uh, salad. And we're stretching the summer point on this barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> so we're hoping it doesn't rain. We've so we stopped just, three or four times for the wind and the rain. And <laughs> yes. So, well, I'll go ahead and get started on the soup then. Okay. And uh, I'll explain first of all that uh, it's, a, it's a tomato soup. And there's a couple different ways you can make it. I've seen a lot of different recipes. And the one that I've got is just kind of a compilation of a bunch of different ones that I've mm -hmm. seen. Uh, basically, you uh, start with uh, vegetables and then uh, tomato juice or vegetable juice. I've also seen recipes that use tomato soup, although that didn't sound too good to me. I haven't really tried that one. Mm. But uh, we'll start off. <laughs> we'll start off with uh, chopping up some carrots and some tomatoes and various other things to uh, to get started. Okay. And then you can go ahead and start working on your thing while I okay. start chopping right. up a few things. Okay. That'll be fine. We have an uncle in Baja, California, and his name is Gaspar, and I can never remember his name, and so I call him Uncle Gaspacho. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know about it, but the rest of the family thinks it's kind of funny. Want me to chop up some garlic for you? Sure. Okay. I can put it in here. I did. Huh? One of the things that I did uh, ahead of time was, uh, you can see in the blender there in front of me, I took uh, some of the vegetables and put them in the blender to get them started. And what I used was uh, one carrot, which I chopped up a bit just so that it would work better in the blender, uh, one green pepper, and one tomato, and about a half of an onion. Hmm. And then I put that in the blender and put uh, one can of chicken broth. Uh, oh. Just so there would be some some uh, liquid in there, you could use you know some of the, the tomato nice juice or whatever. But yeah, and uh, that's what's in in here. And it's kind of up to you if you want it fairly chunky. You can uh, you know just kind of buzz it a few times, or if you want it to be quite smooth, you can you know let it blend well. But um, that's what we start with, and then uh, two very large cans of um, tomato juice or V8 juice. Uh, whoops, I, there I said it, didn't I? I wasn't going to say the <laughs> brand name. But uh, and also I'll go ahead and get some of the other things chopped up here that we're going to use. And 
I don't think we made it outside with the juices. Hint, hint. As to uh, how large you chop up the vegetables, that's just kind of up to you too. I don't usually okay. chop them up real small. I think uh, nice. yeah. you can still sort of tell what they are. Yeah. Um, how you much? can, you can how do them garlic? how you like. Um, I like usually two or three good sized cloves. I figured you would say that. Yeah. I made it here without a chef's knife too. <laughs> can I borrow yours? Okay. <laughs> Not the big one. Oh, the big one. Okay. Thanks. This is sort of a new experience. Doing outside shows in Montana <laughs> <laughs> is a real iffy proposition. People from California would be laughing at us. Miriam, you can hear the uh, livestock <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Have the mama and the baby chicken cruising through here in a minute. <laughs> and I've said this many times. But uh, you need a source of vitamin C every day and vitamin A every other day. And the tomatoes and the peppers and the onions will more than take care of the vitamin C in uh, Frank's cold soup. Yeah, it's really a very nutritious soup because it's got yeah. uh, a lot of vegetables in it. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've, that I've thought about that uh, a person could include in the soup if you really wanted to, I've, I've never tried it and uh, I've never seen it in a recipe, but if you really wanted... Uh, to make it a little heartier, uh, you could put, uh, I would think, diced turkey or ham or something yeah. in it too. Um, or, and of course, if you uh, if you want to keep it completely vegetable, you wouldn't have to use the chicken broth, but yeah. uh, I like that pretty well. You could put green chilies in it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, as far as how hot you want it, again, that's, that's really up to you. Um, mm -hmm. I usually use just a couple little dashes of hot sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, if you really wanted it hot, of course, you could put more. Also, if you wanted to spice it up a little more, some salsa would be good in it. So okay. there's a lot of different things you can do with it. Again, it's uh, it's pretty much up to you. Yeah, it sounds like a neat idea. And you could do it early in the morning and just refrigerate it in, yeah, the, it's, in the heat of the day you aren't cooking. Yeah, it's best if uh, you do do this uh, ahead of time. Both this and the fruit salad, I think, are, are much better if you do them far enough mm -hmm. ahead of time that you can let them sit in the fridge overnight. Yeah. Uh, same, same with marinades, but... Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, like um, spaghetti sauce. It's better the longer you, you wait. You can just put it there. Yeah. Now, the, uh, if you don't really like the garlic flavor uh, to be quite as strong, and you can use less, you can put it in the blender. Uh, this is going to be a little hot because we haven't had a chance to let this sit overnight. Yeah. But if you were to let it sit like you normally would, it would be uh, blend in the flavors pretty well. So. We're all pretty well trained to eat garlic, too, by now. <laughs> after all these shows. <laughs> I'm just using a half of uh, green pepper here because they're so large. Okay. Now this, uh, this soup, you can, you can actually put some, uh, some things on it uh, depending on your taste. And there are a lot of different uh, options you have. And I'll just mention a few of those. Um, one of them is uh, black olives, which is what we'll, one of the things we'll use today. Mm, and uh, I'm going to slice them up and uh, we'll put those on top after we've made the soup. One of the other things you can use is, uh, is uh, unflavored or plain yogurt. Mm. And just put a dollop of that and we've also got some of that today. Uh, I've seen recipes where they say to put lemon slices on top, and again, that's mm -hmm. something you can do. Um, zucchini, purple cabbage, there's a lot of different Ooh, things that you pretty. can put in here. Yeah. Uh, what I like to put on top is, uh, because it's a cold soup, I don't think that saltines are real good on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never, in fact, I've actually never done that. What I do a lot of times is to sprinkle just a little bit of wheat germ on top, mm. yeah, and that adds idea. a little Better bit of flavor, you and you know, it's good for you as long as you don't put too much of it on there since the in large quantities the wheat germ actually does have some some fat with it doesn't it? Yep. It's a good protein source but it does yeah, have some fat. Does. So. Okay. I'll start making the marinade over here and we're gonna marinate beef and chicken and I'm gonna start out with just a general marinade and then change it I'll use the one for the chicken and then change it a little bit for the beef and turn it into sort of, it's almost a Korean kind of a thing. And let's see.
Aha, uh -huh. easy open top. <laughs> hmm. It's also part of the wildlife. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm going to use just one green onion in here. Um, you could use, again use more. It just it really depends on your taste and whatever you've got on hand. Um, there's a lot of other vegetables that could be used in this uh, uh, broccoli and uh, cauliflower. Mm -hmm. uh, if you chop it up fairly small, would be good in here also. Okay, that's a cup of salad oil in the marinade. Just to confuse you thoroughly, do both of them at once. But the recipes will be on. If I can remember it. They will be. <laughs> and, and if you use any pepper, watch that because it doesn't have a shaker. Okay. And soy sauce. I'm going to go ahead and start putting this together. Okay. Yeah, just move this stuff out of your way. And a half cup of soy sauce. Get the shaker off of there. And it has turned out to be a nice afternoon after all. <laughs> And soy sauce has a lot of sodium in it, so if you're on a limited sodium diet, just leave it out. Or you can buy the low sodium soy sauce now. I haven't checked it out to see how much sodium it actually has in it, but that might be an option too. And this isn't enough honey to make it very sweet, but what it does is it helps the marinade hold on to the meat when it's barbecuing. And kind of gives it a nice glaze. And probably about two tablespoons of lemon juice. Quarter of a teaspoon of pepper. Would you hand me the chicken wings and the meat? Sure. Nice. <laughs> You're kind of crowded over here. <laughs> Dick, we need a bigger table. A couple more. Here, clear that out. Okay, and again on the chicken, cut the fat off. And some people even skin the wings, but I'm not going to. And they say, uh, for, what is it? One ounce of chicken wings, even with the skin on, is only 60 calories, so that's not so bad. But if you want to skin them, go ahead. Hey, you're putting this stuff in there. One of the reasons I use that uh, that soup terrine, it's, uh, it's actually a hand-thrown one, um, is that in the fridge, it just seems like it makes it taste better than yeah. if it's in metal or anything else. Yeah, a lot of and things, like with marinades, that's one thing, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I'm marinating the chicken wings and the beef in a glass or a Pyrex pan, because metal will really throw it off. And then, too, the nice thing about the soup terrine is that if you leave it in the fridge overnight, then it uh, gets good and cold, mm -hmm. and it helps to keep the soup cold while you're serving it. For those people lucky enough to have hot weather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and put this in and then we'll get uh, okay. and get everything else ready to go here. Okay, we need That's trash. And, excuse me. I'll mm -hmm. 
Oh, we do have one. How about that? See? And I'm going to pour half the marinade on the chicken. Maybe a little more than that. And turn it all around. And this is another thing that should be done earlier in the day. And then let it, you can let it sit. It should be marinated for about two hours before you cook it, but we're going to do it anyway. Over there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any of them. I don't afraid. either. Okay. This is our first time outdoors, yeah, folks. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. Could somebody on the outer edge of things? Okay. And there's chicken wings marinated. And then this uh, piece of meat I got was on sale because it's like day old or something. And it was a uh, regular $5.92, but it's only $2.96. And we think it's a chuck roast. <laughs> we're going to call it a chuck roast. And I'm going to cube it, and then we're going to use it on shish kebabs. You aren't in there yet. And I'm going to stir this up a bit and, and cover it. Ooh, that's really pretty. Did you want some Tabasco sauce? Yeah, I'll put a couple dashes in there. Okay. The other uh, condiments or whatever you want to call them that go <coughs> in it, but wait until we're ready to serve. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I have used um, in it is mushrooms. I noticed you had mushrooms oh. for your cooking, and so uh, you can it reminded put some in me. There if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. I'm not going to worry about it. But uh, it is, uh, you know, there's just a there's just a multitude of vegetables that you yeah. can use in the soup, and once you have the basic ingredients down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the other. It's not really a secret ingredient, but uh, when I buzz this stuff in a blender, I put in uh, just, well, probably a couple tablespoons of juice off of the, uh, the olives. Mm. And I do that rather than Whoops. using the, uh, um, any salt. You don't really need any other seasonings mm -hmm. in it, I don't think. Oh, yeah, I was going to mention that I got unsalted tomato juice, so I didn't know if you wanted to compensate for that or not. Oh, I don't really think we'll need it with all the vegetables. Yeah, so. I don't think so either. Vegetables contain a certain amount of sodium naturally that you usually don't count if you're on a low sodium diet. You don't have to worry about it. Now we know why this was on sale. <laughs> it's got a lot of fat on it. It's coming out a little bit. There's a lot of meat on it, too. Actually, we don't need this for a while yet. Oh, good. So I'll hey, that get helps. that out of the way. Now you can see the mess I've been making over here. probably need to take a break here pretty soon and mm -hmm. uh, okay. get ourselves, get myself organized again okay. here, so. back and we chopped up a lot of things while you were gone and I finished the marinade for the beef and I used the chicken marinade that I started with the only thing I changed is I added a teaspoon of or a tablespoon of sesame seed and two green onions chopped up and a tablespoon of molasses and that'll make it kind of a teriyaki sort of sauce and then I'm gonna thread them on skewers and put them on the barbecue and hope it works it should and put green pepper and mushrooms and ouch. 
<laughs> onions, and then start over again. Oh, this would be a real nice uh, meal, you know, for a picnic or something mm -hmm. to have, uh, you know, you'd have the soup as a... Yeah. And again, you can get everything it. done ahead of time. <laughs> anyway, just keep threading stuff on there, whatever you like. And you could, in season, use zucchini or you could put little potatoes on here or tomatoes. I've tried tomatoes and by the time the beef gets cooked, the tomatoes are <laughs> through the grate. So if you do tomatoes, do them separately. Okay, and we'll stick another mushroom on there for good luck. Okay, put that over on the grill. That even sounds right. And then I had this idea about the chicken wings so I could turn them easier. I don't know if it'll work or not. What do you think? Should work, yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of working. they have racks that you can buy but these are a lot cheaper and then sort of put them on like that and then they sh they'll be easier to turn okay we'll let those go and then you want to yeah let's go ahead finish? and finish up what I'm doing here I'll keep um, threading. yeah there's one thing that I forgot to mention um, if you have sweet uh, or that is fresh sweet basil that's a, a good um, spice to put in the soup and uh, about a quarter cup would be with fresh mm -hmm. but uh, with no, dry I of course. No I just got a splinter myself. That's, oh. what for. <laughs> <laughs> That's fresh from last year from the garden. Oh is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that in here and we'll let it uh, we'll let it kind of marinate here together for a little bit longer until we're ready to go and uh, then also I'll get this fruit salad going. Because the fruit salad takes so long to do, uh, we went ahead and did most of that, and I'm just going to add the last few ingredients to it. But and we can explain to them what you put in there. In the soup? No, in the salad. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the salad is a combination of, again, what some people think sounds a little strange, I guess. Um, it's a combination of uh, cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon, tomato, and avocado. And uh, again, that sounds like maybe a funny combination, but I think it makes it excellent. Well, uh, a lot of people salad. don't realize that avocados and tomatoes are classified as fruits. They usually use them with lettuce and other vegetables, but they are really fruits. I'm just going to finish chopping up these uh, Weren't impressed avocados. By that, no? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I do is uh, use two avocados, two tomatoes, and then usually about a half of a uh, uh, watermelon, and one cantaloupe, and one honeydew. Hmm. That seems to come out about right, and again, it's best also if left overnight in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Again, there's a couple things you can add to uh, the fruit salad just before you use it. And the two things that I think are my favorites are a little bit of uh, shredded coconut on top, Ooh, we've and, got some uh, or, and or. Uh, either slivered or uh, sliced almonds are mm, real nice. On, yeah. Just sprinkle a little bit on top just yeah, before you eat it. Yeah, that does sound good. So we'll see what uh, what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and put this in and then we'll mix it all up. You can bring the whole thing over here. Too. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Now this is real juicy looking and that's oh. one of the things that makes it so good is that if you, uh, again, leave it in the fridge covered all the juices all get, the juices get together and it's yeah. uh, it's just real good <clears throat> the only and all of these foods can't help but just be really good for you tastes so good you don't even know they're good for you the other thing about this is that uh, this doesn't look quite as appetizing as it does if you if you have the fancy little spoon <laughs> that, uh, that makes the melon balls and I just used a regular spoon on this, so it isn't quite maybe as uh, it's, fancy looking. It's but, uh, and what I do with it is usually I put uh, a little bit of fresh ground pepper on it when I eat it. Uh, mm. If you want a little salt on it, that's okay too, but uh, mm -hmm. just a little bit of pepper to me just really mm -hmm. tops it off just right. Yeah. Sesame seeds would be good in there too, but we're having them in yeah. here. Okay. 
Okay, I think I got that about crowded enough. Well, everything is really starting to smell real good here. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll break and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Yes. Okay, I'm going to take the shish kebabs and the chicken off the grill because they look about done. That looks beautiful. Very nice. And the chicken skewers worked. Okay, and then Frank. And we've got the, uh, the soup is done. And I put uh, some cucumbers, uh, a little bit of carrot, uh, some unflavored yogurt, and some, uh, what do you call those things, olives <laughs> on the soup. <laughs> and then on top of the, uh, the fruit salad, oh, we put a little bit of uh, uh, coconut. And we didn't have any uh, almonds, so we just used walnuts, which would be fine, too. And uh, I think we're going to have a good meal. I think so, too. Yep. And thank you very much for watching. And I would like for the camera crew to come up now and thank them for all their hard work and hundreds of hours of volunteer time to make these shows work. And this is Carlos. You know Carlos from the show that he did, <laughs> Rodriguez. And this is Karen Welch and Mark James. And you guys have really done a fine job. Appreciate it a lot. Hi out there in TV land. <laughs> it's been fun. That's good. Maybe we'll get to do another one. Yeah.